How can you land your first freelance coding project? That is what we're gonna talk about today in this video. Now, to give you a little bit of backstory, here at DevSlopes, we have taught over 750,000 students across the world how to become coders. And if you include our YouTube channel and everything else outside of all the courses we've used, we've taught well into the millions. Now, essentially, what I'm saying is we've used mentorship-based coaching to teach all of our students how to become developers, right? How to teach them the skills, and most importantly, to teach them software engineering. Now, after that, what we're going to talk about today is how our students use those skills to go out and land their first three to five freelance projects. And those are the things that they take and leverage into building a six-figure career as a software engineer. So in today's video, we're going to talk about getting that monkey off your back. We're going to talk about getting past that imposter syndrome. Okay, the strategy today is to show you how to get past all of those things and land your first freelance project. Now to give you some context on myself, my name is Nathan Savage and I got started in freelancing a long time ago. I got started in freelancing whenever I was working at a call center making about $10 an hour and I had to find a way to make some more money. So what I did, I developed some skills and I went to Upwork and I started looking for projects. And this is what got me into the coding world, right? I initially came from the advertising and marketing world. So you're gonna see an outsider give you some insights on proven strategies for coders to find projects. Now, essentially what I did is at the time, I did everything I can to find projects. And I spent about a year and a half constantly applying for projects on Upwork. I never had success until I did. I spent about a year and a half consistently testing what proposals to use, what sales strategy to use. Essentially, I developed a playbook on how to do this. And today we're gonna to talk about that playbook and how I went from making next to no money on Upwork to making well over $15,000 a month. So let's talk about how you could use those strategies to land your first freelance project. Again, I got my nifty iPad here and I got some tea. So if you need to see me take a break or if you're watching along with this, grab some so you can pay attention as well. So first things first, we're gonna talk about groups that you could use, then we'll talk about Upwork at the very end. And we're talking about groups because they're incredibly, incredibly powerful. See, if you use something like Facebook, Slack communities, or Discord communities, these are going to be some of your best resources to find clients. They're absolutely amazing. So let's think about this. When it comes to Facebook groups, you want to find coding Facebook groups, especially if you are a web developer, you ironically, you want to look for a lot of marketing groups. Okay. What I mean by that are communities like click funnel communities or anything along those lines. See, there's a massive demand right now for tons of people with web development skills. Realistically, it's HTML and CSS and a basic understanding of JavaScript. The base understanding of JavaScript is mainly to download and implement Google Analytics, Google Tag Manager, Facebook Analytics, um, Facebook Offline Conversion API. There's a wide variety of things you could learn about in a later time, especially when you get experience with Node.js and just a little bit of backend stuff. But you just need to have the ability to read documentation. If you have that ability, you can have tremendous success. So let's talk about this. If you are a web developer, how do you land your first project? Well, the first thing I would recommend, go to Facebook. We want to look for a ton of marketing communities that seem legit, right? You want to make sure that everybody posting in there, there's, they're typically asking for tons of questions. There's people asking for support. What you want to do is go in there and instead of immediately pitching, Hey, let me work with you for $15 or $45 or a hundred dollars an hour. Instead of doing that, you want to go in there and contribute. Now, the things that help you get these projects is understanding how do you build their trust? What do you need to say to come off as an expert? Well, we know a couple of things. We know that when somebody's working or looking for somebody to work with them for web design or web development, what they're typically looking for is somebody that understands the end goal. So what is the end goal? Well, when it comes to web development work, what you first and foremost need to be able to do is create a website that can convert leads, right? Convert web visitors into leads. So that's what you want to say. Hey, my goal is to help you. Okay. My goal is to help you figure out how to build a website that can, co that can convert web visitors into leads that your business can contact and eventually sell to. That is the end goal. When we look at e-commerce companies, their goal is to turn web visitors into people that buy from them. Now, understanding the goal is to have people convert, right? To turn visitors essentially into dollar signs, reverse engineer that, right? Talk about, okay, what is your current conversion rate on your site? If they don't have a website and they're needing to build something from scratch, ask them, okay, 
what are some design examples you want to build off of? Show me some websites that you love that you would love to be recreated. I don't think you understand the true power of this, just so you know. If you have the ability just to go in and say, hey, what website do you want? I'll create that website for you. I'll create the exact replica. All you have to do is give me the text that you want. If you can do that, you're set for life, right? And you could do that with basic HTML and CSS skills, right? Most of our students are taking on freelance projects within 45 to 60 days of joining our program. And that's because they've completed HTML and CSS to very extreme, ex extensive knowledge, essentially. So it depends on yourself. How good are you with HTML and CSS? You need to be able to build responsive sites, whether it's on mobile, tablet, desktop, whatever it is, and they need to look good. Another next step is to test the, essentially the speed test. Go to Google speed test, put their website URL on there, and it's gonna give you a example of how good it was. You need to make sure that baby is in the green. So Facebook groups, Slack groups, Discord groups, you wanna tie into all of those, especially marketing communities, because these are the joke I like to say, these are the jocks of the uh, of the world. They're somewhat technical people, but they don't know anything about programming. And they typically use WordPress, Squarespace, or Shopify to build out their sites. Now, one of the problems is they want a lot of customability and they just aren't great with design. So if you could go in there and say, hey, what website do you want built? Okay, you want this one? I can take and build this exact same thing with the exact same graphics. And if we need to make a couple things, go find a designer on Upwork, ask them to get a better design, and I'll take that design and build this exact same thing as long as you give me the assets. If you have that ability, you can land a freelance project within the next week to 10 days. Guaranteed, it is a very, very simple process. And every single Thursday, I'm teaching our students how they can do that, right? I'm coaching them through this progress. And the big factor here is, there's about three principles. I'm gonna pull this directly from my iPad here. There are three principles that lead into freelancing success. There's three principles that lead to freelancing success. And please break out a notepad right now and write these down and really keep these in mind. Principle number one is you need to build a pipeline, okay? You need to learn a little bit about sales right now. This is what we're gonna talk about, sales how to build a pipeline. Number one, you need to keep track of all of the opportunities of that you like, right? This is part of building a pipeline. So let's say you saw five people who are looking for help on their websites, or they were looking to have a website built. You wanna write those names down and keep track of those people. If it's on Facebook, add them as a friend and send them a message. Um, when I first started working with Mark a long, long time ago, I reached out to him from a community and I followed up with him about four or five times because he just had a lot going on, right? And so I keep messaging him. I kept messaging him and offering him some advice, offering him some support. That's exactly what you need to do with a lot of people you're reaching out to. And the second variable of this is follow up with those people frequently, just like what I said. Keep following up with them, okay? If they don't respond to you for the first message, it doesn't matter. Quite frankly, it does not matter. You need to add them and just keep following up with them on a consistent basis. And they're gonna take that as you actually care. And when you follow up, ask them about the things that I just mentioned. What is your current conversion rate? What type of website do you want built? What do you want it to look like? What message do you want to be displayed to everybody? Right? Number one, additionally, what marketing services do you need? do you have? How are you gonna connect everything? When someone submits a form on your website, where does that information go? You wanna have all of these really important conversations with them. Core principle number two, activities equal opportunities. Activities equal opportunities. This is incredibly important. Okay, the reality is this is just like basketball or if I took a bow and arrow out, um, I am not trained working with the bow and arrow in any capacity. So if I go out into a field and I put a target out there and I start pulling back, letting go, pulling back, letting go, pulling back, letting go, I'm willing to bet out of the first hundred shots I take, very few are actually gonna hit. So in this example, what I need you to do is to make sure that your activity is very high. You're gonna fail a lot out the gate trying to find these clients and that's completely fine, but you need to be searching every single day. And especially if you're in mobile development, you have to search a lot more. I would be highly suggesting finding people on contract work and groups are great as well as we work remotely in a handful of other sites to find that contract work but you need to be searching every single day. This is how I made my first breakthrough in freelancing. And this is why we talk about in DevSlopes, the importance of freelancing first, finding two to three freelance projects and using those to get a job because you can't 
compete head on with the software engineer college students, right? The computer science students. You just can't compete head on. What you can do is change the playing field, right? You could play a different game. You could show up with job experience and experience from clients talking about their experience working with you. That changes things, right? That puts you in a completely different category than these guys getting out of college with no real experience. So what you wanna do, you wanna be reaching out every single day, finding opportunities, finding everything that you want. Activity is the big game changer here. And finally here, you need to build trust with everybody by being unique and showing that you can be trustworthy. How do you do that? Well, I'll give you one of the small things that we use as a secret sauce in everything. We use Loom, L-O-O-M.com, Loom. Whenever you find somebody that you like or whenever you wanna provide advice to somebody, record a Loom video and send them that video. Hey, I opened up your website, right? And I see what you're talking about. Number one, your site is not mobile responsive. Realistically, I think that's just us going in, making some HTML and CSS adjustments to make it mobile responsive. That shouldn't take you more than three or four hours, right? Additionally, I'm seeing how you're having tons of issues with call to actions on the page. You're having tons of issue with maybe some design factors here. I completely see what you're struggling. I would suggest you make X, Y, and Z changes. And by the way, if you don't want to do these and you want to focus on building your business, I'd love to do them with you. And we could have a conversation about that. I'd invite you to schedule a 15 to 20 minute conversation with me and we could chat about this and we can chat about this in more detail. How does that sound? Guys, this sounds very simple. And I see websites all the time or programs all the time talking about how to guarantee yourself success as a freelancer, how to make six figures as a freelancer. What I just told you is the key. I just handed you the key on a silver platter. Use Facebook groups, go to Upwork. Whenever you go to Upwork, use Loom videos to show them that you care. If they give you their website details, right? If they give you their app idea, whatever they give you, record a personalized Loom video and send it back to them. This is the exact same strategies I used to build a marketing agency from zero to $15,000. And it took about, once I started hitting these strategies correctly, it took me about nine months. Okay, so for yourself, for yourself, you're gonna struggle for probably the first 10 to 14 days, but you should be able to land a project in that time period. Now there's a lot of additional skills that tie into this, right? Sales skills, that's why in the program we do mock sales calls. Uh, if that's something that you feel like you really need help with, and if you feel like your, your development skills really aren't there, you don't have any portfolio projects, your HTML skills and CSS skills are kind of eh, your JavaScript skills you don't really know and no JS is whatsoever, you don't know how to build serverless code or server-side code or anything along those lines, reach out to us. I would highly suggest the DevSlips program in that circumstance, right? We created this to work with you hands-on. There isn't a single boot camp in the world that can compare to it, right? We individually look through your code and we teach you the core principles of software engineering, right? How to write code that is maintainable, how to write code that is easy to change, how to write code that is scalable. These are the three things that be most important for anybody getting into coding, but no boot camps talk about it. No training programs talk about it. No courses talk about it. They just wanna teach you HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React, Express, Node.js. Uh, MongoDB, they just wanna just jump in and teach you languages. Well guys, not everybody can use the tools the same. Just like a carpenter, if I gave the tools to build a treehouse to a carpenter versus giving me those tools to go build a treehouse, I can guarantee you I'm not gonna build one near as safe for my two and four year old to go play on. I want a professional to do it. Everybody can learn how to code but not everybody can code right. And that's what we focus on within DevSlips. So if you wanna learn how to build a six-figure freelancing business with an actual mentor, with somebody right beside you, and if you wanna learn the actual skills that have helped our students land jobs at Apple, Airbnb, uh, Netflix, Google, pretty much everywhere across the board, and how our students build six-figure careers in as little as eight to 16 months, reach out to us, let us help you. In the last video we had about the coding motivational, I talked about how we could help the student named Rick go from working in pest control, making 40 to 45,000 to well over 90,000 now. Let us help you. 
that is the first step of landing your first freelance project. I hope this gives you a great understanding. Don't forget to subscribe and like this button so you can go back and watch it very easily. If you have any questions, drop the comments down below. Look forward to seeing you tomorrow. Talk soon.